Now from WATN, it's Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. Welcome to Local 24 This Week. Hope you're having a good weekend, and thanks for joining us in our weekly look back at the real story behind the big stories. Before I introduce my panel, here are our topics for today. Down to the wire. This week we had some interesting developments in the race for Mississippi governor, not the least of which was a new poll indicating the contest may be closer than we thought. Divided District 7. It's one of two city council seats where there's a runoff, and incumbent Berlin Boyd is in trouble. Can he win this fight for his political survival? And MLGW cuts. A consultant says the utility could save more than $90 million, which it seems inclined to pursue, but it hopes a willingness to cut will also get the city council to change its mind about that rate hike, rate hike I should say, that it asked for last year. But first, our one-on-one -on -one segment, and we're happy to have the president and CEO of the Memphis River Parks Partnership here with us, Carol Coletta. Thank you so much for coming on. Glad to we be appreciate here. appreciate it. Rightly or wrongly, I think when people hear Memphis River Parks Partnership, the first thing they think about is this controversy over Tom Lee Park and the future of Tom Lee Park. You're proposing an uh, ambitious redesign for the park. I think most people acknowledge uh, that is the front door to our city, and we want it to look uh, the best it can, but you know, and I have to tell you that... The folks with Memphis MA Festival uh, are not happy about some of the changes that are proposed and worried about how it'll affect uh, attendance for their festivals uh, during uh, the, month, the month of May. Uh, you contend that both things can coexist, and you still contend that, and this has gone to mediation. What is the status of that mediation? How much can you tell us about that process? Well, I can't talk about the details of mediation, but what I can tell you is that we are very close on the issues. Um, we designed the park with Memphis and May in mind, uh, so I think we're we're so close, and all we need to do is resolve a couple of details, and I think we'll be on our way. So one of the concerns uh, of the of the festival folks is just that there's so much landscaping and the like involved that they won't be able to house the same number of people. I want you to. Take a look at some of the graphics you, you sent us of how the park, how you envision the park looking, some of the renderings and design work, and explain why, why you think it's special and how it will work in conjunction with Memphis and May. This one is called the Memphis River Garden Drawing, and it gives folks an idea of the number of trees and berms and this kind of thing that you have planned. Yeah, this is actually... Uh a new entrance to the park that we're real excited about. There is no, you know, Memphis is on a very steep bluff. Right. And traversing the bluff to the river and the river to the bluff can be difficult. This is actually a terrific ADA uh, access ramp that will go uh, take people down from the bluff to uh, Tom Lee Park and create a new entrance to the park. So we're real excited about the opportunity to get people with baby strollers and dogs and you know older people and people who just aren't you know quite up to that mm -hmm. big hike uh, back and forth because we think connecting the river front to downtown is one of the most important things we can do along with the disinvested neighborhoods connecting it on the north and south because what the riverfront the economic impact on the, from the riverfront actually comes from its connectivity, its connections yes. to downtown and to north and south because it makes everything around it more valuable. So these connections are really important. Okay, let's show uh, something else here. The next graphic, I believe, shows some kayaks. That actually, yeah. by the way, that, that entrance, that new entrance yeah. would give Memphis and May a new entrance to, okay, the, right. to the park as well. So give them a few more options. The kayaking is just... Uh, the the wonderful discovery this summer of the harbor. You know, many people still think of that as the river, right? And they think it's, oh my gosh, it's the treacherous Mississippi River. I'm mm -hmm. going to get in and end up in New Orleans. <laughs> but not so. You can actually kayak. You can uh, paddleboard. You can do all kinds of things in this harbor because essentially it's a stillwater harbor. So it's very calm. Uh, but it's beautiful, and we had a lot of people out there this summer because we made uh, the harbor accessible by um, uh, by boat 
sometimes for free, but always for rental at River Garden and on Mud Island. So some recreation opportunities that will be a part of this expansion and, and redesign oh, that yeah. people maybe don't even know are out there. Exactly. Right now. Okay, what's our next graphic here? Ah, the Habitat Tower. Yeah, explain that. This is an area of the park on the very south end, Tom Lee Park, on the very south end that is never used uh, because it's sloughed off. And so this part of the park is actually very wild and, and, and not easily uh, negotiated. So we wanted to take advantage of that wildness and uh, build a habitat tower. You may know that the Mississippi River is one of the nation's biggest flyways. In addition to most of the water in the country flowing right at our doorstep, mm -hmm. you also have a lot of birds uh, flying by our doorstep. So this would be a way to do a habitat tower as well as a um, another special event space. Obviously, the birds are separated from the event space. People yes, have asked us that. No, we don't. Droppings. Yeah, no, we don't, especially <laughs> not on a wedding. Right. <laughs> uh, and there will also be fish habitat underneath. So this is going to be, I think, a very special place uh, for people to be in nature, of nature, right, you know, be able to commune with the river in an exciting way. And I think we have one more. There you go. And I think that's just... Uh, this is the new River Garden. And what we opened this almost a year ago. We celebrated its birthday on November 9th. Uh, we're excited about that. And um, this has, that's not actually a Tom Lee Park rendering. Okay. That's a River Garden. But what we have learned in River Garden this summer is how to manage meadows, how to think about ways people will use space, how to think about play, uh, how to think about respite, all in the same place. Uh, today, people are really cultural omnivores. They want multiple experiences in the same space. Mm -hmm. They want active, but they also want stress relief to get away. So providing all of that in a tight space uh, has in the last year, and we hope in the next couple of years before we open uh, Tom Lee Park, we will have learned enough that we can get Tom Lee Park much more right than wrong uh, when we on day on day one, so that we save money and uh, give a great experience from opening day. What sacrifices, if any, will the the Memphis MA Festival folks need to make for this to work? That's a great question, and I, I think there will need to be a more careful uh, load in. For events, I mean, you won't you, you won't want to take your trucks over the um, you know over the turf uh, any which way. I mean, I, so you're going to need to load in in a in a organized way, more organized than today. Of course, it's organized, but just mm -hmm. a little more with more pacing, a more uh, more timing. Uh, if you don't make your time, you may have to load later. Okay. So you know, just really making sure that. Um, the load in, load out is carefully done. Otherwise, I actually think festival goers can have a great um, experience. Will there have to be any sacrifice in terms of number of, of people who can attend or number of booths that can be set up? No. So you're, you're saying there, any concerns about revenue being affected are invalid? No. I, 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 yes, yes, they are yeah. invalid. Right. Uh, no, we should not have revenue concerns. Okay, all right. Uh, I think there is a concern. Let me say, yep. uh, Memphis and May would need to be out of the park for one year during right. construction. Right. So that is a concern. It's a concern to downtown hotels. We understand that. But downtown Memphis Commission had offered five or six other sites, alternative sites, in downtown. And so we're hoping that Memphis and May will find one of those sites. Uh, useful and can use that in the off year. When do you hope to have uh, forged some kind of mediation agreement that both sides can be proud of? I think it's I think it's really soon. Again, there's, by the end of the year. Uh, by the end of the year, I think so. Okay, all right. And is there anything you would have done differently in terms of the? I mean, there were some negative hits you had to take regarding uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and how that process uh, unfolded. Was that just misunderstanding, or, or were there things that could have been d done differently? It's a good question. It, that's a red herring issue, and let me tell you why. You, 
you can't go to the Corps of Engineers and ask them to approve a project until you have plans. We don't have plans at this point. So you don't file, you know, and ask for approval until you have very specific plans okay. because that's what they act on. In the, in the, before you get there, you have a lot of conversation with the Corps about, well, we th we're thinking about doing this, but what do you think? Well, no, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. Be careful of this. I mean, the core, it's the, the core gave us this park in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. right? Because they created the new dike and yep, put yep. fill in. And then the city added to that fill. So we owe the core a lot for this. The core controls the river. It, it, we can't not do what the core tells us to do. So really close cooperation with the core is what we need. But the core's never told us, no, you can't do it. We've okay. never asked the core. Real quick, we, yeah. we're running out of time, but I did want you to uh, do a little bragging on the number of dockings just to let folks at home know uh, Tomley Park is becoming quite a famous uh, tourist spot uh, as people join it from the river, not from the road. Indeed, uh, we have river cruise boats, overnight uh, cruise ships, uh, this year we'll have seven. We'll have 68 dockings. Next year we'll have 101. That's a 43 percent increase. We can't actually even accommodate all of them at Beale Landing, so they're using Mud Island as well. And that number is expected to grow in the same way over the next two or three years. So that's exciting. Okay, very well. Thank you so much for coming on thank with us you, today. Richard. We appreciate it, and we'll have you back on. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks, Carol. We'll be back with my roundtable right after this. Medical assistants are on the front lines of health care, helping people, changing lives. In as few as eight months, Concord's medical assistance program can prepare you for your career, while our employment services will help you make the transition from student to professional. Get ready for accelerated, high-quality, real-world training. Get ready for a career that will change your life and the lives of others. Get ready for Concord. Enroll today at concord.edu. Opportunity awaits. Get your gun, Nell. Saddle up for now. Western Trading Days at Sunrise Buick GMC. Old time trading prices on over 700 new Buicks and GMC trucks. And the Sunrise Youth Car Corral has over 150 in stock. Ranch managers have been told to cut prices to the bone. And remember, you can bring your car to Sunrise Service no matter where you bought it. If you're a good person with bad credit, SunriseMemphis.com will help put your brand on one of these little fillies. Three hot dogs and cokes at the Chuck Wagon. Western Trading Days going on now at all three Sunrise locations. We make it fun to buy a car again. Face it, your 9 p.m. routine could use a little excitement. Wake him up. ABC's got you covered with groundbreaking, award-winning dramas. Cool. Something big, I see it happening. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, something big, I see it happening. This is exactly where you want to be. So grab the remote and kick back. Why end the night when 9 p.m. is when awesome begins? Then watch local 24 news at 10. You're watching Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. <clears throat> Back now with our roundtable to talk about some other issues from the week's uh, events. And we'll have uh, Otis Sanford, Local 24 political analyst, to help us out here, as well as political consultant Tawan Stout Mitchell, who's also a former Memphis City Councilwoman. Thanks, you two, for being here. Let's talk about the Mississippi governor's race first. Uh, we know who it's between. We've got Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves, the Republican, and uh, Jim Hood, the uh, Mississippi Attorney General, the Democrat. And a new poll out this week indicating the race may be tighter than we had thought. Uh, might explain all the negative ads we're seeing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 40... It's uh, six percent for Tate Reeves right now, forty-three percent for Jim Hood, and nine percent undecided. Uh, what do you make of that, Otis? Well, the nine percent undecided is what I'm looking at here, and I'm trying to figure out where that is and where it's going to trend to. I am surprised that it's that close, this close to the election. That's why we see uh, the Trumps trumping around in um, in Mississippi. You know. Uh, uh, the Don Jr., I think, was there this past week. We had a video of that. He was in Oxford right. and a, a farm town in which they uh, uh, had a big Second Amendment 
I which, don't know. They, which is what they would have yeah, out yeah. of Mississippi. And, of course, the president's supposed to be there this week. Uh, I think they see that this is a tight race. This is going to come down to turnout, as all elections do. Uh, but this one, you know, there's a real high African-American population in Mississippi. And if that population turns out to, to the level that, say, Alabama did um, a year or so ago uh, with Doug Jones, then I do think that Tate Reeves could be in a little bit of trouble here. But I still say at this point, um, I, I think you have to give the slight edge to Tate Reeves. Juwan, you've spent some time in Mississippi recently. Mm -hmm. and I have. There's been some criticism that maybe Jim Hood hasn't made much of an effort to bring out his base. Yeah, they have two exciting candidates, one for attorney general, a Democratic woman, mm -hmm. and then they have a, a state representative running in the DeSoto County area. Mm -hmm. And both candidates, what I'm hearing is that Jim Hood is courting moderate Republicans and being pretty successful in doing that. How, however, he's forgetting his base. and. It's one thing that Trump knows how to do well is to gin up the base. So I would suggest that uh, Hood needs to figure out a way to gin up the Democratic base. But he's so busy courting Republicans that he thinks the Democrats, of course, will be there. Well, it sounds but like if the turnout is not good, mm -hmm. he loses. Sounds yeah. like Phil Bredesen mm -hmm. all over again. It well, does. And it does. And I think Juan makes a really, really good point here. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I don't... I understand why he's going for those mm -hmm. moderates, and I understand why he's going for those maybe disaffected mm -hmm. Republicans. But yeah, you have to nurture that base. That's right. And it's all a, because it's all about that turnout. It's all about the base. And if you get that delta, <laughs> no, it's all about the base. And you get that they delta. They say that region. I didn't say that. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> if you get that delta corridor down there, where there's a lot of African-American voters there. You get Hines County, which is Jackson. Um, you can do it, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, you can right. do it, but yeah. he has to gin up his He's face. He's got to gin up the base. And what may happen is that once Trump goes down, it may have a boomerang effect on the base. Because then they will be going out to vote against right. Trump. No, that, right. that, could happen too. <laughs> that could happen too. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be watching that one. I also want to uh, pay attention to the uh, MLGW study that came out this week to switch gears here, uh, which determined that if uh, MLGW needed to make some cuts, they there was there were some places to cut. Uh, a total of 300 to 400 positions that would shave about 92 million dollars or so. And also the study recommended closing four uh, community offices. Uh, that are currently staffed right now with uh, around the county. Um, and the idea is that, hey, if we show a concerted effort here, when we, we find a way to trim 92 million bucks, that city council will in turn uh, pass the rate increase that it wanted last year and was denied. Uh, obviously, the infrastructure concerns remain. Uh, do you think this is the right way to go about it, Tawan? I always hate to see people lose jobs. But if the jobs are vacant, and nobody's filling them yet, that, and you're able to manage, I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's in the job, yeah, I hate to see that happen. And I also hate to see services cut at the lowest level, the community service centers, where some people have to take a bus, maybe now to go pay a bill. Uh, I don't know what the answer is, but I will say this. I watched the school system cut jobs and then ask people to find jobs elsewhere. And the jobs they found elsewhere, they had to have two of them to make one salary, mm -hmm. or they lived in poverty. Now, I don't know how we address this poverty issue if we're always cutting the, the people at the bottom. Yeah. Well, and then there's also, Otis, oh, something that MLGW doesn't really want to talk about, but it's still very much uh, an issue, is there are other ways to save, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Travel. Fees for <laughs> memberships right. all across the country. Perhaps some salaries. Din dinners, <clears throat> salaries, and then everybody has a job. Mm -hmm. But there's also this this uh, investigation into whether we can buy utility the power from somewhere else besides TVA and save up to $400 million a year. Well, that's right. Well, you could borrow against that and, and fund everything you needed for the infrastructure. Right. I, I think that has to come back on the table. It's been off the table. Nobody's been talking about this for the last several several months. So that has to come back as well. I, I, I see what uh, Tawan is talking about here. Yes, in this city, you have to be very conscious of the jobs issue because, you know, the one thing that we lack is a lot of good-paying jobs. jobs. And 
certainly MLGW provides that. But this is a study that just can't not be just put up on a shelf to grow some dust. You need to look at this um, and try to heat it as much as possible uh, where it won't do too much damage. Uh, and I think this is something that is ripe for a lot of debate going forward, and it needs to get to the city council level, and we'll see what happens from there. But may I say something else? I think it's naive that people have bought into the fact that you can continuously manage a company, a government, a TV station without ever increasing rates. Eventually, the rubber hits the road where you have to raise your advertising fee, you have to raise the rates. It may be every five or six years, but I think people will adjust to moderate increases that, that you can explain and that it's used for the, that purpose. If you have uh, a budget that you've really tried to maintain. But I guess uh, with utilities, though, everybody, not everybody needs to watch TV, but everybody does need to stay warm and stay cool. That's yeah. right. And that's the right. people that get hit the hardest are the ones who can least afford it. That's right. And I think that's what you have to be sensitive here. Mm -hmm. Is here, there's no competition for MLGW, and everybody has to have utilities. We're still one so. of the lowest rated. And we are. They have and one of the lowest are. rates in the country. Yeah, we are. But I do think, just like the people pass the sales tax on themselves, when you can explain it and you will stand by it and be accountable for it, people will understand it. Okay. And I say the same thing with the lights going out every time you look around because of the infrastructure. Something needs to be done there for sure. We're going to leave it there. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. For incredible speed and a great value, Xfinity delivers both. Xfinity is America's best internet provider with fast internet and the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity Xbox. Call 1-800-566-8080 today to learn more or get started with an amazing deal on Xfinity Internet for only $20 a month for 12 months. You'll get the best in-home Wi-Fi experience with fast speed and reliable coverage for all your devices. But that's not all. You'll even get control of your home Wi-Fi network, see who's online, and even pause Wi-Fi to connected devices. Just call 1-800-566-8080 to get started with Xfinity Internet for just $20 a month for 12 months and ask how to upgrade to XFi Advantage for unlimited data, enhanced network security, and so much more. Get the speed you want and the value you want, all risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just call 1-800-566-8080. Xfinity. Simple. Easy. Awesome. I keep the gun where she can't find it. He thinks I don't know where it is. She doesn't I know. know. Someone you love could be hurt by a gun accident in your home. Keep your gun locked away when it's not being carried. Take the time to talk with your kids. Have the talk with your family about gun safety. Greater Memphis Chamber presents Memphians on the Move by Methodist Laboner Healthcare. Please join me as I explore the impacts of those people and companies who are driving economic growth and empowering a stronger workforce in Memphis. Paul Newell and Jennifer Aniston and Charlie Puth. You're a huge Friends fan, right? Yes. Is there going to be a Friends reunion? <laughs> Watch Ellen, Monday at 4 on Local 24. You're watching Local 24 this week with Richard Ransom. Another big political story this week was a news conference that was held late in the week uh, where all the candidates who ran for District 7 in the Memphis City Council race, those who did not make it into the runoff, endorsed uh, one of those who did, and not the incumbent, by the way. Michael Lynn Easter Thomas received the endorsement of all the other candidates, and that puts Berlin Boyd uh, in a precarious position, I would say. In the first election, he had 30% of the vote. Um, Ms. Tom Easter Thomas had 21% of the vote. And if she gets all those others, then Berlin Boyd's in trouble. Well, it does. And, and you know, this just shows me that Berlin Boyd is not well liked at all. Um, some of that he brought on himself with some of his behavior on the city council. Um, but again, as we talk about turnout in every election, um, the, the, the voters are going to have to come out there on a, on a Thursday in the middle of November uh, to vote, which uh, the turnout is going to be woefully low. 
um, but that's going to determine this. And I do think it's going to be very close. And I would not be surprised if Berlin Boyd loses this race. He has some conflict of interest issues that have come up in his last term. Uh, but he has the Smith father and son, the uh, FedEx father and son on his side. The first I don't horizon. think they vote there. Uh, right. <laughs> that's and I don't so think that they're going to have that much influence. <laughs> There's some money there, though. What do you but think? it's money there. Yeah. Well, I, I think that the fact that 70% of the people, nine candidates ran, and 70% of the people who voted didn't vote for Berlin Board is a good indication that Ms. Thomas has an opportunity to win this race. So does Rhonda Logan, who only lost with 1% of the Frazier vote. In District so, 1. In District 1. Mm -hmm. And I, it's so long after you say your mama from the city council chambers and you have controversy about conflicts of interest. That stuff catches up with you. Mm -hmm. It catches up with you. And people really get tired of it. And we can't underestimate the gender issue here uh, because women in this community vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have been very powerful and very forceful and very effective uh, in recent elections. And that might play against Berlin board in this election. But it just depends on who gets out and votes. It does. It all comes to turnout. The, it turn, oh, it, uh, turn and, out, turn and, out, turn out. And it is tricky with the with the runoff. Yeah, it always is. Runoffs yeah. are very tricky. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. He was just another poor farm boy facing an uncertain future in the Black Hills of South Dakota. But through a series of events only God could orchestrate, the young man was transformed by a message that would end up touching millions of lives throughout the world. Discover what God can do with just one person that answers his call. Watch the Christian Worship Hour this week and learn about the amazing new film, Heart of a Shepherd, The Extraordinary Life of Harold E. Salem. Visit ChristianWorshipHour.com for more information about the film and weekly program times. Hi, folks. Good news to bargain hunters and bandits from the Chevy Sheriff in Collierville. Sunrise has over 500 Chevys and used cars in stock just in time for the Sunrise Low Price Rodeo. Factor rebates up to 5000 Sunrise discounts high as 8000 And don't forget, Sunrise specializes in secondary financing. Need a good body shop? Bring it to Sunrise. We work on all makes and models. Remember, you can bring your Chevy to Sunrise for service no matter where you bought it. Buy American and buy from Sunrise. There's always a sale at the Sunrise Chevy Ranch. Find new roads to 385 in Houston, Levy, and Collierville. Chevy's cost less than Sunrise, partner. Hey, Lou, where are you rushing off to? I'm huffing it to play Tennessee Cash with Quick Cash. What's Quick Cash? It's an instant play you can add to your Tennessee Cash ticket. Must be fun. You're soaring like a peregrine falcon. I feel like the wind. A faster chance at fun, a faster chance to win. Tennessee Cash with Quick Cash, only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Catch you later for tonight's drawing. Hopefully, we'll celebrate. He's got you covered with groundbreaking, award-winning dramas. Cool. Something big, I see it happening. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Something big, I see it happening. This is exactly where you want to be. So grab the remote and kick back. Why in the night when 9 p.m. is when awesome begins? Then watch local 24 news at 10. The email to uh, write me and weigh in on tonight, today's show is rransom at localmemphis.com, rransom at localmemphis.com. My thanks to Otis and to Juan for being here as always, and my thanks to you at home for being here as well. We'll see you next week for Local 24 This Week.